NBA 2K25 is here, and we recently got our first big bit of news for the new game, the new My Player Builder. I'm here to break it down, give my thoughts on it, give you all the updated news. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What's good? It's your boy JD, and we got our first glimpse of the NBA 2K25 Builder the other day, and I just want to kind of give you guys my point of view on it. Um, before we get into it, I just ask you to drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, subscribe if you're looking for NBA 2K25 builds, player face creations, and whatnot. You know I'll be bringing those to you all NBA 2K25 long, but first I wanted to show you guys the quick interview with LD and Zach Timmerman from NBA 2K, just kind of breaking down the new builder and everything, and then we'll get into the courtside report, we'll cover the, the new perks, the badges, the builder, and some of the new features, so let's go ahead and check out this interview, and then we'll get into the courtside report. Let's go. When you're building your my player, you're you're not just building a legacy this year. You're also building a dynasty for your team. And we understand this is a very integral moment, a very important decision. And so we put a lot of time into ensuring that the various paths that we have in the builder are going to allow all walks of our gamers to be able to make the player that they want to make. The create your own. It's the builder where you just have so many options: changing your position, changing your size. You can articulate through every single one of your attributes and get to right where you want to go with your builder. All while you can see the various perks that your player is eventually going to be equipped with. Ultimately, it's the builder where somebody who wants to mess around with the thousands of possibilities can eventually make the build that they want to. We also have our pro build making veterans that have been playing the game for a long time, they're probably going to want to jump in there as well. There's also another group that wants to jump in there to try to make a unique build that nobody else in the world has made. This sounds really intriguing. All right, so a lot of good information there from Zach and from LD. Now, when we get into this builder in the courtside report here, look at this screen. The first thing I notice is this right here. There's going to be a fifth tier of badges. This red tier is going to be known as a legend badge. So not only do we have the bronze, silver, gold, and hall of fame, but in NBA 2K25, we're going to have legend badges as well. So we're just going to have one more level that you're going to be able to take your player to to make it even that much better. Um, I'm going to suspect these are going to be pretty expensive. You can see here with this lightning uh, launch badge, you know, it takes a 94 speed with ball. I'm going to guess, you know, with the attributes being expensive in 2K24, getting up to like a, you know, once you got up in that 98, 99 range, that's probably where you're going to see a lot of these legend badges lay. I did see a note over on Twitter the other day it said most of the thresholds for these are going to be in that 97 to 99 range. So expect those to be very expensive. Um, there's also something else I noted up here. There's only two badge tiers this year instead of four. So they've cut that down a little bit as well. And then I also noticed this takeover thing here. And we'll get into takeovers in just a little bit. But it appears you're going to be able to see which takeover you can get. And it's going to be tied in more to your attributes and stuff. You know, as opposed to being able to just select whatever takeover that you want. If you guys remember back to like 2K like 20 and stuff like that, when we had the pie charts, it would then at the end of your builder give you an option to select different takeovers. And depending on how you made your build, you could either get you know sharp takeover, post takeover, or whatever. So kind of tying back into a little bit more of a feel similar to that. Um, you know, so we'll see how that, you know, how that kind of all plays out and everything. The other thing I noticed was the, you know, a lot of high attributes here. You see, you know, the high 85 on the driving layup, the 87 driving dunk, you know, an 82 three ball, you know, probably pretty low if you're going to make a 6-2 type of a build. But then you see like the ball handle all the way up here to 98, the speed of ball at 94. And I'm going to put a screenshot up here. I tried to replicate this build and you've probably seen this comparison. A few different times but if you put the side by side of trying to put this build in NBA 2k25 into the 2k24 builder you just can't do it I mean you can get close in some spots but if you were to do it from top to bottom you would run out by the time you got to the defense and so that led you know a lot of people to believe that we're gonna have extra attributes and stuff to work with and there was actually something put out on uh, Twitter as well that said more or less yes you're going to have a little bit more attributes to work with while you can't make a 2k25 build in 24 if you took your favorite nba 2k24 build and put it in 25 as more of like a starter type of a build you would then have attributes that you could add to it and make it even better in nba 2k25 so i'm really looking forward to that and for all you looking to, to make your first builds you know maybe pick your favorite nba 2k24 build start with that as your template and then kind of mess around with it just kind of get a, a feel for the build and everything like that um oh, there's also a note here you can see i put up from wolf as well uh he said if you choose to go for legend badges you're going to be more of a specialized type of a build whereas if you 
you know, stay in that golden hall of fame range, you're going to be able to have more of a well-rounded type of build. So what that kind of means to me is that a lot of you have asked for that like 2K19 type builder, you know, 2K20 with the pie charts and things like that. If you think of it in that realm with the legend badges and everything, if you're really trying to get specialized in a couple of different categories, then that kind of brings you back to a very similar style of builder for that. So I could see this a lot for like the lockdowns and stuff like that. You know, you might go crazy on your perimeter defense and steal and maybe your three ball or your finishing, maybe not a ton of, you know, a ton of uh, playmaking and stuff like that in there. So I can definitely see where there's going to be a lot of very unique builds um, using the system here. One other thing they touched on was the height caps. Not a ton of changes here. You can see the point guards go up to six foot seven. They went up to six foot eight in 2K24. The shooting guard six eight. The small forward only goes up to six ten now. The power forward seven foot, and then the center at seven foot three. So you can kind of see the heights there. And, and being that they put a six two out here is the very first build they showed. And when you get into some of the different badges and things that are out there makes me think that we're going to see more of that 6'1 to 6'3 type of a point guard this year as opposed to the 6'6 or 6'8 like maybe we saw in NBA 2K24. I could be completely wrong, but those are just my initial thoughts and things that I noticed on the builder. So let's get into the next bit of news here. All right, so I know this is last on the courtside report, but it's probably one of the most important nuggets that they dropped. and It's really tied in directly in with the builder. So I wanted to show this first. This is the cap breakers. And by now you guys have probably heard about it and have seen, you know, seen videos or seen things on Twitter or whatnot about the cap breaker. It says last but not least, we're excited to introduce cap breakers into NBA 2K25. We saw community feedback that players wanted not only to increase their attribute ratings above their max potential caps set at build creation, but also have those ratings contrib uh, contribute towards animations, badges, takeovers, attributes. That's exactly what cap breakers do. For example, if you set your ball handle max at an 85, you can apply two cap breakers and play with an 87 ball handle rating and also unlock all of the animations, badges, takeovers, and everything that require an 87 ball handle. Um, it does talk about a couple of the restrictions on here. It says there are a few restrictions to ensure a balanced gameplay and experience. Each attribute can be increased only by five above its cap, and you can use a cap breaker on an attribute up to its max potential rating allowed by your builder's height, weight, and wingspan, which is shown in the builder and allocating your attribute potential. You must progress your attribute to its max potential, meaning you need to max out you know that rating and before you can put the additional points on it. I'm going to do a little clip here. I'm going to take you over to the builder and NBA 2K24 and just explain this. There's been a lot of a lot of confusion on how the cap breakers work and everything like that. So I just want to take you over there and show you that real quick. But uh, I, I really like this idea. You know, in NBA 2K24, you know, you have the, like the arm sleeves and everything or like the affiliations or even the top 10 where you got like the plus fives to all your ratings and everything. But it didn't give you the extra animations and attributes or the extra animations and uh, um, badges and everything like that that went with it. That appears that it's going to be the case in NBA 2K25. So let's just head over to the builder real quick. I want to just give you a quick breakdown of the cap breaker, kind of how it works, and then we'll get into the next bit of information here. Okay, so here we are on the NBA 2K24 builder. I just want to explain this attribute, this cap breaker situation real quick. So you can see this player here is a point guard, 6'2, 193 with a 6'7 wingspan. If I go ahead and take my three ball and max it out, you can see that. The maximum it will go to is a 94. Now with those plus five, you know, maximum that you can put on the cap breaker, this does not mean that I could add plus five to it and get a 99 three ball. What this means is if I wanted to take this build down to an 89 three ball, as you can see that on this particular builder it goes, takes it from a, you know, 49 overall down to a uh, 44 overall. So it saves you some points there, but I could, make this build with an 89 three-pointer and then as I got those attribute caps I could add them one by one to a maximum of five to then max out my three-point rating at a 94 so the cap is still based off of like it is in the builder it's what the maximum is based on your height your weight and your wingspan like I said the three ball here being a 94 doesn't mean I can get 99 it means I can make my build at 89 and then add the plus five to eventually have a 94 unlock the badges the animations the takeovers everything that comes with now having a 94 three ball so i just wanted to hop in here real quick kind of clarify that because i know there was a lot of questions on it so 
All right, so just finishing up on the cap breakers, you know, when you talk about earning these through the throughout the year and everything, you know, whether it's through rep or season rewards or whatever it's going to be, this is going to make for a lot of very unique builds as we progress and people start earning those cap breakers and everything. When you're able to put, you know, a plus five onto a category, you know, you're going to get a lot of very unique builds. I think by the time we get into the middle of the year, you know, even towards the end of the year, you're like, remember 2K, I keep reverting back, 2K20, you got the 10 plus badges for hitting legend. I kind of think you know this is similar to that once you you know grind for a little while and you're able to earn these extra cap breakers you can have a build that's going to play much different than a lot of these other builds and it'll be a very unique thing to have so that's just the last thing i wanted to touch on on cap breakers now let's get into the next bit of news all right so the next thing i want to touch on that you didn't see in the builder if you were looking closely was stamina stamina is going to be earned through the gatorade gym workouts this year it says each player is going to start with an 85 stamina attribute rating and then during a workout it will add plus two stamina points regardless of your workout result and you can do four workouts each week once your my player reaches a 99 stamina the attribute rating is permanent so you won't lose your attribute rating in anything it also says as an added bonus for hitting the gym you will get at least three stars on all four weekly workouts you will receive a temporary turbo boost meter and unlock a body type for that my player so that's kind of your gatorade your extra stamina bar or whatever you'd like to call it like we had in 2k24 so that will be something that will be added in here and then the body types as well and it says all of this will stick with your player for new and existing saves meaning if you get this on your first player you're not gonna have to go to the gym on your second player to get a different body type or you know, to get that extra you know have um get a turbo meter or whatever you would like to call it so that's gonna be big for a lot of people that want a, a build to look a certain way you know if you grind it out for a burly body type or something like that you know for, for those of us that make youtube videos and make nba player builds that's gonna help out a lot too we're not gonna have a stick figure you know luca or shaq running around we're gonna be able to utilize those and, and make a lot of very cool unique builds that are more like that player so something that really looking forward to there so if you didn't see stamina in the builder itself when we we're kind of showing you the screenshots this is why and this is how it's going to work so so the next thing is takeovers um you notice down the builder there was that little takeover tab there too it's 2k25 introduces this is a brand new takeover system with 72 takeovers and 14 takeover abilities each takeover targets different attributes um it says ranging from level one when you're just heating up to level five when you're red hot when you excel on the court your takeover meter fills up gradually boosting the targeted attributes as you rise up to the, rise above or up to the five levels this happens automatically so you don't need to manually activate your takeover so i kind of like this feature and i think joe referenced it in his video you know when when kobe gets hot in, in the third quarter is how he referenced it you know he doesn't tell his teammates hey guys i'm gonna wait till the fourth quarter and pop my takeover no it's it's instantaneous you know when you when somebody's you know in a groove and, and hitting, knocking down the shots you know they're hot right then and there they're not you know getting that extra ability you know a quarter later or you know later in a quarter kind of when they feel like popping the takeover so the fact that it is automatic is kind of you know kind of cool it says at level five you'll trigger trigger the takeover ability that when used effectively can make you the most dominant player on the court initially you will only have access to levels one through three and then you will unlock levels four and five each by activating its previous level in 30 different games so again it kind of gives you something to grind for to be able to unlock those extra takeover um, abilities and everything it says the takeover level unlocks do carry over between saves so another nice thing here once you do it the first time you don't need to go back and do it for each of your additional builds I really like that feature i hate having to start over on a build and, and re you know grinding on all these little tedious things i just want to grind out the overall and everything on the player and then get them off and running without having to do all that extra stuff on the side which is a huge time saver and it's just a more convenient thing it says each takeover has attribute requirements so again tying back to the builder unlike this year where if you had a 25 three ball you could still pop sharp takeover you know didn't really make sense um, it also says the you'll see the attribute boost as well so as you progress from level one to five we always kind of knew that it increased your your attributes a little bit but now we're actually going to see how much and for what categories that it is boosting and it says you can change your takeover at any time between games selecting from the ones that you meet the attribute requirements for again i keep going back and referencing nba like 2k20 and some of the prior ones where you had the different like loadouts um 2k20 didn't have the loadouts but some of the next gen stuff had like the loadout screen so you could switch your takeovers in and out so something that you can do there getting down into the takeovers it does show you an example so here's kind of showing you building up from level one to level five they show the takeover ability here barbecue chicken but you can see the close shot um you know your post control strength and everything as it's leveling up from level one to level five how those attributes increase 
So I think that's kind of a cool little feature. And again, the fact that it pops automatically and then you know, not, you know, just whenever you feel like popping it, it's, it's kind of a cool feature as well. Um, you know, we'll see what the different takeovers are, you know, and, and what that leads to. We're seeing a lot of, of uh, like post score type stuff here. So we'll see if post scores are going to be OP. I could definitely see, you know, a post score using this barbecue chicken on like the 1v1 court and going crazy there and just kind of overpowering some people. So we'll see how that all plays out. But this is kind of a view of how the new takeover system will work. Um, one thing they did say about team takeover is that did change. It's now a team chemistry type thing. So once you guys build up a, a team chemistry and max that out, you'll have some type of a, a takeover-ish type of ability as well. So that's kind of a quick, brief overview as far as the takeover. In NBA 2K24, there are 40 skill badges. Similar to takeovers, each badge will have a unique requirement. You know, this and that. The 40 badges are split across two tiers. Um, it says that, you know, they're progressed by activating each badge in the game. This means that you will earn them more quickly by you know utilizing each badge similar to like it was this year. The progression this year can only increase and does not drop even if you don't fire a badge off. So badge regression is gone. That is a huge thing. Hated when you, you know you didn't do enough Euro step layups and then you lost your two stepper or something like that. You know, just throwing that out as an example, but badge regression is gone. Tier one badges are the most powerful badges available to you, but are more difficult as compared to tier two badges. You can also work on your badges in the team practice facility just as you always kind of could. And then here's a full list of the new and changed badges. So this is where I'm going to pop this up on the screen a little bit differently so it's a little easier for you guys to read. Um, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the badges that we've already um, kind of have or the, the similar badges in the game, but I did want to touch on a couple of the new ones. Um, and then we'll kind of show you some of the old ones that were taken out as well. So. You know, you can see here as far as the finishing goes, Aerial Wizard and Float Game are the same. Hook Specialist, Layup Mix Master, uh, improves the player's ability to um, finish fancy or acrobatic layups. Kind of looks like they took like the two-step and spin cycle and maybe fearless finisher type stuff maybe, or acrobat, and then kind of mixed it into a single layup badge. Um, paint Prodigy, again, looks like more of kind of a paint masher, you know, inside ability type of a badge. Physical Finisher. Um, to me it says increases or improves a player's ability to battle through contact to convert contact layups so maybe kind of a con like the bully or um, fearless finisher kind of tied into one and then you see again the post fade phenom post powerhouse uh, this looks like a combination of your back down punisher and your drop stepper again looking at these I see a lot of inside post score type badges leading me to believe that those are going to be a very tough build again speaking of you see the post up poet you know, I think that's going to be uh, you know, some of your like dream shake and some of that type of stuff kind of in here, your spin, uh, post spin and everything. Then you see your posterizer rise up so as far as our finishing badges go. Onto the shooting, one thing you'll notice is there's only five shooting badges. Um, they've kind of combined a couple of them in and then they've taken a bunch of them away as well. Uh, you see Deadeye, which also now incorporates the blinders badge that was mentioned over on um, Twitter as well in a post that so the blinders and the dot eye badge are kind of put into one limitless range mini marksman if you guys remember a couple years back there was a badge um the name of it slipped in my mind now but uh where the shorter players depending on the height could shoot over taller players or around taller players with a you know not quite of a biggest penalty uh, again leading me to believe that maybe the shorter point guards and then stuff like that are going to be back in the game we'll see how that all plays out and then you can see set shot specialist um looks to be a combination in, of like catch and shoot, uh, claymore, your corner specialist, more for just you know knocking down those catch and shoot type of shots. And then you see shifty shooter where it says it improves the player's ability to successfully make off the dribble high difficulty jump shots. So that's taking more of your agent threes and your midi magician type of a thing and putting that together into one badge. So I can see that badge you know being a pretty glitchy type of a badge for a lot of people that like to do those types of shots. Um, when you look up here, if you noticed in the builder too, I kind of forgot to point it out, but rebounding is its own separate category this year. Just two badges related to rebounding, box out beast and rebound chaser. And then you get down here, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the playmaking. Um, again, I'm just, I, I, I'm not a primary point guard. I don't, you know, not shifty and doing all that crazy stuff, but just kind of looking at some of the badges, you see ankle assassin, um, you know, your ankle breaker type badge. It sounds like we're going to get more of those fall down ankle breaker type of animations and stuff. You, know, you got your bailout, your brake starter, dimer, handles for days, lightning, um, lightning launch, appears to be more of like a quick first step type of a badge. 
so it speeds up launches when attacking from the perimeter. Um, having that on that legend, as you hear the dogs in the background. <laughs> um, getting that on legend, I can see that being really glitchy for some of you point guards or even like slashers and things like that. Um, you know, and then we look at strong handle, unpluckable, versatile visionary. Um, just talks about like needle threader, kind of a, a badge. And then we get down into the defensive badges here. You see challenger, glove. You can notice that right stick ripper is no longer in the game, uh, which I'm sure is going to make a lot of people very happy. So we'll see if the on ball steals are quite as pesky and stuff as they were in NBA 2K24. Um, the high flying denier that to me looks like more, uh, maybe a combination of like chase down artist but it also made me think of like on the perimeter when you're jumping out to contest shots maybe that'll give you a little extra boost and maybe you'll get some more block shots out on the perimeter i guess we'll we'll wait and see how that one kind of plays out um you got a movable enforcer and interceptor back and then you got your off ball pest on ball menace which appears to have kind of taken the place of clamps uh paint controller which seems to have taken the place of like your um anchor or um uh, intimidator type of a badge and then you get your pick dodger and your post lockdown and then it just shows a couple of miscellaneous badges brick wall slippery off ball and pogo stick so only having 40 badges leads me to believe that your attributes are going to end up maybe being more important than the badges you know we'll definitely see how that plays out um, i'm going to put up on the screen real quick here i'm going to just show you all the different badges that are no longer in the game as you can see there's quite a few of them that they've either taken out or remixed into other badges so we're definitely going to see how that plays out but i, I really feel like maybe the attributes are going to truly matter we'll see having that legend here on some of these definitely could feel that being pretty glitchy so we'll kind of see how that all plays out uh, just want to touch on these real quick similar to nba 2k24 there's gonna be some badge perks um multipliers and things like that in this game you can see uh the participation and synergy are going to be very similar to re and returning from nba 2k24 the one difference here is going to be the max plus one it says you can boost a badge one level above its max potential you must progress the badge to its max potential before equipping it and these are unlocked at level 15 for a tier 2 and level 30 for a tier 1 in each season and at the end of the season your badges equipped with that plus one will revert to the original level meaning seasons are back and also that you can um, earn this you know kind of a boost type of a thing throughout the season and if you have a gold badge it could be elevated to hall of fame if you have a hall of fame badge it could be elevated to legend and keep that for the remainder of the season so for you that want to just buy out the battle pass and you know go straight to level 40 you'll have this plus one for the entire season for the rest of us you know our, our nine to fivers and our weekend warriors probably gonna have to grind these out a little bit but just something extra cool to kind of throw in there performance multipliers um it says maxing your badges in nba 2k25 by taking advantage of performance multipliers very similar again to nba 2k24 you know you have your up for the challenge grade a student you know and the winner circle just reward you for doing different things in game which help you get faster badge progression and everything so that's just one more real quick day through in there is regarding the badges and then lastly the badge elevators uh, it says the badge elevator can permanently boost an individual badge of your choice up to three levels within its max potential if your example the badge is currently at bronze it has the max potential of a legend it can immediately be boosted up three levels to bronze to silver to gold to hall of fame and these will be available to unlock throughout the year from season level rewards badge elevators earned through seasons one through four can boost your badges up two levels so again kind of something to work for throughout the year with seasons this appears to be taking the place and kind of reversing the effect of the floor setters so instead of having a floor setter now we're going to have a badge elevator so it's kind of the quick summary of the badges and, and everything so so that's really it that's kind of the uh, it's maybe not quick and dirty but uh kind of my you know view and, and everything of, of what i noticed with the builder and the things yet to come really excited for how everything is going to play out and we're really not going to know truly until we get our hands on it or if, if you know if we see some footage from like community day with creators and whatnot getting their hands on the builder and kind of seeing how it works and everything like that um, but I'm really excited. I really like the, the things that I'm seeing so far for NBA 2K25. Um, again, appreciate you guys for sticking around. Definitely like the video if you've been around this long. Subscribe if you're new. Help us push to that 4,000 subscribers and beyond. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.